I can't resist showing you one advanced feature in today's video just because it's so great for educators who have privacy concerns. It's time to make our video editing process simpler, yet more efficient and more dynamic. And so today we're going to start with our first tutorial on using Flixier, the cloud-based video editing software, and the people who are sponsoring today's video on the series as a whole. And here we're going to start today with the very simple basics in case you know, you're an educator who just wants simple videos to create for your students. This video is for you. We're going to take it slow, maybe a bit too slow for those who are more advanced, but we're going to take it slow and I'm going to show you exactly how to import materials into Flixier, how to do some basic trimming and some basic editing and how to export it and take it where it needs to go. Okay, you can follow along if you want to with the free version of the software. I have a link below in case you want to do the step by step with me and explore the features as well. If you ever have any questions about the software, go ahead and let me know in the comments, but let's go ahead and take it away and show you my screen. So your dashboard is the first thing you'll see once you enter in and create an account for Flixier. So this is my dashboard and on the left here, you have how much space you'll have and how much time you have for exporting. So as part of this series, Flexier was kind enough to give me the team version. So I have plenty of space and time to create these videos for you. But basically here you have, you know, some settings that you can use, but here's where you start with importing content to create your video lessons. Okay. So we're going to keep this really simple. So step one is to click create project and you'll see the formats that your video can take. So this first one is regular video like you would see on YouTube, but if you wanted to, you can create, you know, let's say Instagram stories on here or, you know, social media posts. There are these other ones, but in, in our case, you're just creating regular videos and you're gonna give your project a name. So maybe tutorial one for this particular video. And then you click create. So now we're ready to create our video and to edit it. The first thing, of course, you must do is import media to your personal library. As you can see here, there's a personal library or the team library in my case because of the account. But import is where we're going to start. Okay, so you click import. And this is one of the great things about this video software is it already has a lot of connections you can make to make it really easy to import media into your particular account. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this two ways. I feel that Loom is very common use by teachers, right? I do have a tutorial on it. And so that's actually one of the ones that is available here. So when you click it, it asks you to import the URL. So here's an example clip I created on Loom. And I'm going to just click copy link, paste it in here, and click import. Okay, so now it's joining my media library, all right? So it's a short clip, just 30 seconds, but right there you can see that it's being loaded onto my account. So that's one way of having video included, right? Clicking import and clicking loom. Okay, now you can have the device, maybe you have your videos on your computer already, obviously that's my device, maybe you have in Google Drive, in Photos, whatever the case may be, Zoom videos, if you record lectures that you want to edit, you can use Zoom as well here. But in this case, I'm going to click Dropbox, okay, and this is mine, and I'm going to click this one right here, that video, and select Choose. Of course, you could add more videos at a time if you'd like but I'm going to go ahead and click import all. Okay. And so now that video is going to be imported as well, right? So step one, import your images or your videos. You can import actual images as well, not just videos. So keep that in mind. If you have pictures that you want to put into a slideshow, for example, that's another option as well. So now we have, that's the first part, right? Importing into our library. Now, what do you do next? It's a simple, all right, I want to do this. I want to use this clip and you just drag it to your timeline, right? I'm going to drag it, let's say, right to the top here. Okay, and that's fine. And so now this is a raw video that I took to use as an example, okay? And now it's in a track, right? And you can move it to various levels if you want to lower it down. It can be in track one. Keep in mind, so let's say you have this video and then you get a second one and you put it on the track above. 
Just so you know, until you do editing, when the video plays, the track above will replace the track below, unless you move the videos to make sure that both appear at the same time. Okay, so that's what the, the track you know, height does. Whatever appears above everything else is what will appear on the screen. So this is how you can add overlays and such, but we'll get into that in more advanced videos. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one by just clicking on it. You see the yellow surrounding it and clicking delete. So it's no longer there. It's just this first one, okay? And so that's how you put it into the track very simply. Now what we're gonna do next is make sure you're clicked into the actual video. And then you're going to click this yellow line and you're going to move it to wherever want you want to do your first cut, right? So you're the first thing you're going to edit out of your video. In my case, I'm going to put it here because as you can see, I have a lot of no speaking, right? This is me setting up and sitting where I need to sit for the video. So and then I start speaking right here. So you move the yellow line and then you just click the S on your keyboard. Okay, you did that. And now, as you can see, Potentially, that's two clips rather than one. You kind of see in the edge there that now it's two clips. And that means you can move, right, the clip as you'd like because they're not two rather than one. All right? So all this, I'm going to click on it again and say delete because none of that's needed in my video. And then I'll click and drag to the front. All right? And now we can move this back here. Okay, so the first thing I did is just deleted that empty space that I had. Now it's just me in the screen. Another quick tip, if you don't wanna keep having to drag the clip forward when you delete a portion of it, so let's say you have this particular clip that you wanna delete, rather than just clicking the delete button on your keyboard, do shift delete, and now it deletes that portion, and as you can see, this automatically moved up to the left. Okay, so that's a shortcut, shift delete. And then you also can go to the end, right? And then move it as well. Okay, click S again. The cut was made and now delete. So there we go. There's a clip of me speaking. As you can see here, there's a lot going on in my background. I'm not exactly in the focus here and I do want to be. So you can go ahead and click into the video, right? And one option is to go here and click crop and then just crop from whatever you know angle you want. But keep it simple, you click and you drag, okay? And then you move it around the screen to where you want it to be, maybe click and drag again. So I'm even more zoomed in, right? And maybe that's what I'm gonna be having for my video, okay? So just me speaking to the camera. And as you see here, now it plays and you have it exactly how you want it as far as how zoomed in and zoomed out. I can't resist showing you one advanced feature in today's video just because it's so great for educators who have privacy concerns. So let's say here you have you know, your, your face or maybe a student's face and you wanna protect your privacy, you don't wanna actually see your face on the video. So one thing you can do here is if you go to shapes, and then where the square is, you click this little carrot and you say square mask. It creates this mask and you can move it up to your face. You can size it however you'd like, right? So covering your face. And then when you do is these masks, you can have pixelation, right? Or blurring for privacy reasons. Obviously there's others for style. But in these cases, so if you don't want to see somebody or for some reason, maybe you have a room full of students, but one person didn't agree, they didn't want to be on video, you can go ahead and pixelate or blur out their face. Or potentially, if you have here, let's say in a screen share, you have you know somebody, a student's name, and you don't want to show the name, you want to show an assignment, but not who wrote it. Again, you can just add another mask, and then let's say explore, was the student's name you can just shape the mask oh and do that shape the mask to blur out a specific portion and then just move it around right until it's only over what you want to be blurred out for privacy reasons or pixelated for privacy reasons so super easy to use and to find that again that shapes the square carrot here and click square mask. So we'll have more advanced features and future tutorials, but that was just a quick one that I really wanted you all to know in video one. 
Now, when you're zoomed in, it doesn't mean that you're stuck that way, that the whole video has to be zoomed in to this exact way. You can click wherever you want once you're clicking into the track, right? And you can say, okay, S again. So you split that clip. And then now let's say this first one, it will be like this, but then you can say, okay, in the second one, I want to move it, right? So now I want to be, you know, over here, right? And then you can make a third clip and like, okay, now I want to be over here, right? In case you want to make some movement in that way, that's simple to do. All you need to do is figure out at what point in the video do you want to make a clip, right? So a cut, right? To make a new clip. And that way you can move around that part of your video to be zoomed in or zoomed out however you'd like. So that's the first thing that you really need, right? That S button on the keyboard. Now, I cut the beginning and the end of this video, right, to make it so it's me speaking the whole time and it's zoomed in how I like. But for another example, let's grab this second clip example, the one that's from Loom. And now it appears right behind this first one. And again, how do we want this one to appear? So when you have it here and it plays, that's what the switch looks like. So I can click into it and I can say, okay, I want it to be the full screen. Let's go ahead and open it up. And now it's your whole video screen. So now you go from me speaking to the Loom video, right? The screenshot. But once again, I wasn't speaking immediately here. So I would move, I would click into the clip, move the line where I want it, click S and delete the blank space. And you can move it up. Okay, then I can move it again right here, S, right here, S, right? But notice here, there's a space here in me talking, but that's actually an error in me saying something in the video, right? So, you know, we make errors, that's very human. So what I can do here is I can actually go all the way through the next part and then click S. So now I'm not just getting rid of an empty space, I'm also getting rid of an error. And once again, move it on up. So now there's no, there's very little space in between this first clip and the second one. And then of course, get rid of the blank at the end. Okay. And so now I have the second clip to work with. Okay. So now something to keep in mind as well is, as you can see, the me speaking is very close together. It's very, it'd be very fast paced when you click play as far as seeing it here. And so if you do large, right? If you move this little circle down here, it elongates this view. So it's much easier to see you speaking. So maybe you spoke and you'd have a lot of uhs or ums. Then you, if you wanted to do that kind of editing, you can say, okay, this, let's say this right here is an uh, right? Or an um. So click into the clip and the S and then right after the after it and the S. And now let's say you just got rid of an um and you move this back and now they'll never know, right? Obviously it's not always super smooth when you do this. I don't recommend doing it a lot, but it is a way of doing errors as well of deleting them. If you actually do do this elongating of the clip, right? So I add that back because it's not actually an um. So you can decide how big or small do you want the clip to look like, okay? And then obviously here's where you scroll through the clips as well. And so that is a very simple form of doing video editing for your video lessons, right? So again, as you go on to the tutorials, you know, next time we'll go into more details, adding, you know, maybe a little text into the video or adding a transition, adding an overlay, those kind of stuff, right? Which can make it more engaging for your students. But for those of you, I first want to do just how does this work? Well, these are the simple steps. And then once you have a video, let's say, all right, I'm done with this video. Then on the top right here, you click export. Okay. And you appear on this page, right? So you can see exactly what you're exporting. You, you can name it as something else if you want to. It's video and audio here. It has this as your thumbnail, right? So what the image you see, for example, on YouTube before you click on the video. If you want to include a custom one, you can click custom thumbnail and import that image and that will appeal there. 
And you can decide, well, where do you want to publish it? Do you want it to be sent automatically to YouTube or to your Dropbox folder or Facebook or like it may be? You can set it up, right? You can say, actually, I want it to go to YouTube and then connect to my account, right? So that's an option there. But let's say you don't want to do any things. You just want to put it into your computer, right? Then you just click export video. Okay. And it says, awesome, your video will be ready in about three minutes. Okay. So now you can find your exporter project in the dashboard. So go to your dashboard. And as you can see, this fourth tab is exports. Okay. So once it's ready, you'll have it here in your exports, right? As you see, it's loading very quickly. And then once that's done, you'll click here and you can download it onto your computer. Okay. Or if you don't want it anymore, you can delete it as well. But all you'll do is once it's exported, click download. So I actually ha I haven't sped up time or anything. As you can see here, obviously it's a short clip, only 40 seconds, but it does export very quickly using the software. So, you know, definitely if you're in a hurry, it's a good software for that versus some others that can be a bit slower. Especially again, if you connect it to your YouTube or to your Google Drive, or wherever it is that you want it to go automatically versus saving it to your computer. Okay, so once you do that and you download it, it will show you how much time and how much space you have left when it comes to your particular account. Now, just for a bit more context while that's loading for these other tabs. Oh, wait, it's done. Okay. But other tabs, you have your whole media library, which are where all your clips or images, you can find them. Review links we'll cover in the last video, but basically you can share links with others and you can, they can co-edit with you or they can comment on it. And then here you can see templates as well, okay, in case you want to use these when creating your videos. But this is more for those who are creating like social media content, I would feel, rather than educators. And then once again, all projects to create a new project. As you can see, this is the one we just made. And again, you just click into it. If you need to make more edits you know, later on, you just sign into the account wherever you are or whatever computer you're using. Two other things to mention before we leave this video. The first is that if you need to, you can go ahead and click into a clip. And you, if you right click, you have some options here. One is to detach audio. Okay, so for example, if you have something, let's say you're screen sharing and the audio wasn't important, you're not saying anything, you're just showing something on the screen, but let's say you're somewhere that's really noisy and you don't want that to actually be heard by your students, you can click detach audio here. And as you can see, it detaches the audio, right? And it's in yellow, so it's been chosen and you can delete. And now this whole part of the video is muted. There's no audio whatsoever in that part. Okay, so another way of doing this is that say you have different images, different slides, or if you have a screen sharing again where you didn't actually speak when you were doing the screen share, well then you can have a separate audio that you record, right, maybe on your phone, and then you add that to your library, you import that, and again, you add it to the track underneath or above the video, and now you can have that audio playing over the video that now has no audio attached to it. Okay, so that's one thing to remember is you can click on a clip and detach audio and you can move it around if you want to. If I clicked undo here, you can move it around separate from the video itself or you can delete it, right? So those are two options as far as the video audio goes. I'm going to go ahead and click undo again because I don't want it to be detached. Okay, so there it's back. Other simple things to keep in mind that makes life easier for you. Let's go back to video here as well. Again, we'll talk about transitions more and everything later on. There is that crop element that I spoke to you about in case you wanna get, uh, get rid of certain portions of the screen. And we'll again talk about how that can be used in more advanced ways in future videos. The one thing to notice here is your video speed. So currently it's a regular speed, but if for example, again, you're showing something on the screen, let's go back to my screen sharing one. Let's say you're showing something on the screen and it takes a while to show you doing it and you're not speaking, you're just showing something. Maybe you wanna speed it up a bit. So rather than being one, maybe it's one and a half the speed of the usual video. Or maybe you wanna slow it down. It can be half, right? So here you can kind of decide how fast or how slow does that clip play. So that's under video speed. And again, you have to be clicked into whatever clip you're using before you can do that.
right? Before you can change the speed or crop or do anything, you have to have that yellow border around the clip. Now effects here, again, you know, not really something we like to use for teaching, but if you wanted to, you can see how different filters work with your video. So let me go back to this part where it's me and click into it. All right, butterfly wave effect, for example. Right, so again, I don't really see the need for filters, but it is something that you can use if you want to. If you don't want to, click that delete button, that trash can right here, and it's gone. Cover as well, you can work with if you want to. And again, I already showed you that audio element. If you want to decrease your volume or increase it, you can decide exactly what the audio level should be, or you can detach it completely. In the next tutorial, we'll actually start talking about some of these extras that you now can add onto videos for those who want to add text or want to add transitions, or whatever the case may be, images from the stock library. But for now, I'm keeping it to the very simple for those of you who just need, you know what, I have a video, I need to edit it out, any errors, any long blank spaces, and that kind of stuff, zoom in, and all that, you can do that very simply using this tutorial. And if you have not subscribed yet, I recommend doing so so you don't miss it. It will be coming up in two weeks. But I have my usual teaching tip videos on Fridays. And so if you are a teacher and that's why you're here, do go ahead and click that subscribe button and a like button if you found this video helpful.